got slides. All right. All right, so good morning, everyone. Um, I wanted to say I am really excited to be here talking to you guys. Um, I love virtual reality, and my friends kind of get sick of me talking about it all the time to them, so hopefully you guys are ready. Um, quick question, how many of you guys in the audience have used an Oculus Rift or other type of VR headset? Awesome. Has any, uh, have any of you tried building something for it yet? Excellent. I see a couple of other developers in the audience. Awesome. Uh, I'm hoping that after this talk, a few more of you guys will want to go out and try it. Um, it's a lot of fun. I hope I can convince you of that. Uh, so my name is Liv Erickson. Uh, I am Miss Livy Rose on Twitter and on GitHub. I am a Microsoft developer evangelist specializing in virtual and augmented reality technologies. Um, I used to work in Unity when I was working on VR technology, and I got really excited about uh, the web as a potential platform for VR. And uh, this is my very first time that I used an Oculus Rift headset. Uh, it was a lightsaber demo, which is the Jedi pose that I've got going on there. Uh, big Star Wars fan, and my first time using VR was to become a Jedi. Uh, so I am also an aspiring Jedi Knight uh, in VR and in real life. Uh, so virtual reality today, what is it? Uh, we do not have the matrix, and depending on your opinion of uh, AI, might or might not be a good thing for you. I'm, not, I'm undecided yet. I think it could be really cool. Uh, this is the, uh, I think they call it the Poculus Rift, uh, April Fool's Day demo, which was a VR headset for dogs. Um, kind of amusing. I tried to get my cat to do it. He was not amused. Uh, hence the dog gif here. Uh, so virtual reality today is kind of an umbrella term to, dis to describe 3D computing that you wear in a headset in front of your eyes, replace your entire reality by whatever's on the screen in front of you. Uh, pretty simple concept. A lot of people are familiar with it, even if you're not a developer and you've seen The Matrix, um, which I saw for the first time two years ago. I'm really not sure how I missed it for that long, but uh, you're probably pretty familiar with VR at this point. Uh, so what VR technology looks like today, uh, I'm going to dive into the hardware right away, because that kind of gives you a starting point to establish what these experiences look like. So I have up here on stage an Oculus Rift, and it's plugged in, so uh, I'm not going to go too far away from my computer at the risk of you know, yanking it out and pulling all this um, off the podium. Problem number one with desktop mounted or head-mounted displays, or HMDs, uh, like the Oculus Rift, you are tethered. Uh, there are two types of virtual reality headsets generally available or about to become available today. And the first one is, like the Oculus Rift, a desktop-powered display. This hardware has a lot of sensors in there. It's got lenses on the back that look something kind of like this. Hopefully, you guys can kind of get a sense of what it is. It's just a lens. Uh, and it has a screen in front of it that I unfortunately can't show you because I can't take the front of this off. But there's just a regular screen, kind of like a smartphone screen in here. And everything that you run on this type of headset is powered on your laptop or your desktop computer uh, so that you get to really capture the hardware uh, to use those and generate those experiences. You get to use the graphics card, uh, the CPU. If you have a really nice gaming machine, which I'm in the process of building mine for VR, um, you can have some really creative, crazy experiences that look really realistic, rendering some awesome graphics. Uh, but not everyone has that, and that's okay. Uh, the other type of virtual reality hardware that is actually available today is a mobile uh, VR headset. And what the mobile VR headset, such as the Samsung Gear VR, uh, does is it still has the casing and it still has the lenses, but it replaces all of the stuff from your computer with the hardware that's powered by your mobile phone. So your mobile phone will act as the display, and it will uh, act as the positional sensor, the rotational sensor. Anything that you run on an application on your phone can be uh, built to mimic a VR app. And those are really, really affordable. Um, if you've have, have you guys heard of the Google Cardboard? Maybe, maybe some of you. So it's what it sounds like. It's a VR headset made out of a piece of cardboard. There are instructions on how to do it out of a pizza box. Um, and all you have to do is add in lenses and then stick your phone in the front. You have a VR headset. Low cost, uh, lower performance, but with the high-end smartphones that are starting to come out, that performance trade-off isn't as great as it used to be. Uh, so these are kind of the baseline experiences that you'll get when you start playing around with VR technology today. And I'm not even going to start to go into the number of input devices that are available for VR, because that would be a whole other 30-minute talk in and of itself. But you can essentially, you know, keyboard and mouse 
basic input. Uh, there are really cool cameras. We saw yesterday an example of using a leap motion to uh, play the, the um, karaoke that they were doing, which awesome, awesome demo. Um, you can use that as input for VR as well. Uh, in addition to all the stuff you've read in sci-fi books, like haptic gloves, haptic suits, controllers that give you feedback based on the uh, environment that you're in, all of those are options. Uh, and that's kind of as much as I'll get into them then, uh, right now. But if you have questions about that, please ask me later. I will continue to rant about those. So the virtual reality app ecosystem primarily right now uses uh, Unreal or Unity, uh, as, uh, which are game engines. Are you guys, who's familiar with those? A few of you guys, most of you guys. Okay, awesome. Uh, so Unity and Unreal were very early adopters of the Oculus SDK and made it very easy for game developers to integrate their uh, headset support into their games by using prefabricated objects that you could just drag and drop into your environment. Uh, because of this, we've seen a lot of games that have started to emerge with VR support. And it makes sense because games are the most natural for us right now to kind of pick up and experience in the first person point of view as if we're walking around in them. Uh, typically, you don't put on you know, a character and run around inside of your stock portfolio, but I'll show you an example of how you can do that in VR in just a little bit. Uh, gaming technology is very familiar uh, from a first person point of view in 3D worlds, so it made sense that that's kind of where it started gaining traction. Uh, as you'll see, JavaScript is also up there. And that's what I'm going to tell you about today, uh, primarily how the web is beginning to evolve as a platform itself for virtual reality and how you can get started building VR apps, even if you don't have a headset, even if you don't have any specialized hardware using JavaScript today. I hope you guys are excited. Uh, so JavaScript and virtual reality. When I started uh, getting really interested about building virtual reality experiences uh, a little bit over a year ago, I started with Unity because that's what everyone said, you know, game engines for VR. And that was cool, but I wasn't really interested in building games. I wanted to build different types of experiences that made the in information we interact with on a daily basis more fun, uh, more exciting, and I stumbled across a lot of really cool stuff that people are working on. I was uh, telling someone today, uh, a couple of days ago about it, and they said it was alpha alpha technology, uh, which I really, really love because most of the time, uh, I hadn't had a chance to play around with stuff like that, and VR is a really awesome place if you love getting into stuff that's doesn't have standards and there aren't any good practices or even best practices or any kind of rules or regulations to follow, virtual reality is a great place to go mess around if you want to break stuff all the time. So, so at the forefront of virtual reality on the web is WebVR. And WebVR is an experimental API that has been implemented in Firefox Nightly and certain builds of the Chromium browser. Uh, this is a way that offloads interaction with virtual reality devices that you may have or be using to view websites uh, to the browser. So in your own application, you don't really have to worry about figuring out what types of app, uh, hardware your viewers are using. It doesn't matter if it's a desktop application or a desktop headset, or if you're viewing it on a mobile phone, the browser will, in theory, take care of all of that for you. So you'll notice, yeah. IE is missing from this as well. So it's not just uh, outside of Microsoft. I'm asking them. <laughs> so with WebVR, you will set your application to query, hey, what are the devices that are available and handle all of the update stuff for me? I don't want to tell the camera to update every time that the user turns their head. And I don't want to do it 10,000 times based on which type of headset they're using. But you don't have to use one of these browsers to get started with WebVR. Uh, and I'll show you why that is, because uh, it's kind of prohibitive if you want to show someone like, oh, hey, yeah, VR headset, like pull this up. You don't want to do the whole, OK, now go over here, <laughs> install this. OK, oh, wait, you got the wrong version. Yeah, no, go back and do that. No, you don't want to do that. That's the whole reason why we write for the web sometimes. Uh, so what's in one of these web VR apps? Well, if you are familiar with 3D environments and coding 3D scenes, then this should be pretty 
straightforward, easy. There's a great talk on 3JS coming up uh, that will explain more about this in detail later this afternoon. So I'm not going to get too much into the environment side of things. But essentially what you have is a scene. Uh, this scene has a camera in it, which is what the viewer will see when they're walking around and interacting with your website and the data that it has. Uh, in, your, in your application, you will have something called a VR control. Uh, this will listen to the browser for any positional changes that your hard, the VR hardware gives uh, the browser and say, hey, this person, look to the left, update everything, and look that way. So you don't have to write that, which is awesome. Um, there's a VR effect and VR polyfill. If you've tried virtual reality, and most of you looked like you had, you'll notice that although everything is rendered side by side, the screen itself is just one screen. And the VR effect and VR polyfill uh, objects and libraries will handle all of that rendering for you, so you don't have to figure out the offset for each browser or uh, with, for each headset type. You don't have to figure out the field of view, the resolution of the device, and calculate that all yourself. Um, Boris up here has already done that with a really awesome rendering library that I absolutely love um, and I use for my projects. And in the case, I mentioned that the browser isn't one of the experimental ones that's working on implementing web, v web VR. You can still uh, fake that effect with the VR polyfill. And what that will just do is split your screen in half and say, we don't know what kind of VR stuff you're using. We can't understand any of that. But that's OK. Just render everything stereoscopically anyway. Uh, and lastly, you'll have a manager that will handle the actual querying for devices and kind of translating the hardware transforms into software transforms. So what does that look like? Well, this is my demo app. and it's. It's a slide, so it's not very interesting. Um, we'll get there. But what you can see here is the effect has been applied to this because when I took this screenshot, I was using my Oculus Rift, and the browser was able to detect that I was using an Oculus Rift and apply this effect to it based on what it knows about the resolution of the device itself and the field of view that the lenses give it. All sorts of really interesting stuff that this headset can tell the browser, and I haven't even begun to look at all of it. But it's really cool. So before we go into the actual demo part of that, we'll peek through the code just a little bit. As I mentioned, I started building virtual reality applications in Unity, specifically teaching myself JavaScript in order to write VR content for the web. So I'm pretty new at this. Bear with me here. Uh, so the first thing that we're showing here is creating a renderer that uses the 3JS library. And it, just a WebGL renderer, because that's how it's going to display all the content on the screen. Uh, so we create this renderer, and then we append it to our DOM element. Pretty simple. The next thing you want to do is create the scene itself and handle all of the virtual reality parts of it. And I say that like, oh, yeah, no big deal. Just handle the VR stuff, right? So <laughs> it actually is that easy. Um, so what you do, create the 3JS scene. Once you have the scene created, you create your camera. And again, this is all just using the same libraries that you already use if you build games in JavaScript uh, and use 3JS. You create a special uh, virtual reality control or VR control element that will, as I mentioned, apply all of the uh, hardware transforms that it gets from the manager, which is querying the browser for the hardware updates. And it will say, you know, create that with this specific camera. And you do the same thing with the effect. So once you have a scene, and you have a camera, and you're the little guy in the first person point of view for this game, the VR um, has already been applied with just those few lines of code. Uh, after that, create the manager. The web VR manager will go in and say, this is the renderer that we have, and this is the effect. Uh, there's a hide button equals false here. That's a few sets of optional parameters that you can include depending on how much of the VR capability you want to expose to the user. If you're writing your application that assumes the viewer isn't ever going to use VR, you probably don't want to use this library. Um, but if you are building something that can be viewed in both VR mode or not VR mode, you'll probably want to toggle between that. And that's one of the things that the VR manager will be able to look for. So we got one last, no, two last things to look at. Um, I refactored all of my slides. I like to say that instead of like redoing it all. I refactored my slides yesterday, so that's why we got that. So you want to create your scene at that point. Now, as I mentioned, I'm not going to get too uh, in depth with this because there is a uh, someone who will describe it much better than me later on today about uh, 3JS. 
but I've created a 3JS element called a torus knot, and I've made it really, really huge because I have the sole intention of getting my user motion sick by sticking them inside of a swinging around rainbow. Really, really practical use of this technology. Uh, so I create the material in the mesh there, and I add this to my scene, which is already aware that it's going to be rendered in VR. And after that, I write an animation function because nobody wants to sit in a VR experience that doesn't move. That's not fun. Uh, so instead of just putting the viewer inside a rainbow knot, we're going to swirl it all around them and make them really sick. Uh, I can stay in this for about 15 seconds before I'm just like, nope, I'm done. Uh, and if any of you guys are brave enough and want to try it, you'll have your opportunity in just a minute. Uh, so in the animation function, you update your controls with the controls.update function, and then you just re-render the scene every time this is called. Uh, after that, you will just continue to repeat the process with the request animation frame function, and that will update everything automatically. And it's spinning relatively fast. So this is what it looks like all together. This this whole thing right here is my VR application in JavaScript. I used a couple of libraries, because uh, as I said, I just started learning JavaScript to do this, and I don't have a lot of the background knowledge required to figure out how to query for devices and how to go through and parse all of the field of view stuff and calculate all of that. I did not major in 3D graphics, so that was all really new to me, which is why I really appreciate this render or boilerplate library. Um, but this is the whole code block for rendering something in VR. It is about 20 lines of code. So let's see it in action. That's the fun part. That's what you guys want to see with this. You don't want to just hear me talk about virtual reality. You want to see virtual reality. That's kind of the whole point. So let's see it in action. I will now switch over. And we're having good luck on the demos so far. So bear with me here. This is the application that I just showed you. Uh, I have affectionately dubbed it Rainbow Knot or Motion Sickness Simulator, whichever you choose. Uh, and as you can see, it is using the polyfill right now because despite the fact that I am using the WebVR enabled build of Chromium, yes, that is the one I went with today. I switch back and forth a lot. Um, it's already rendering in VR. So this particular application will not work in a non-VR browser, but if you're using the polyfill and you're not being really specific about the checks like I was to make sure that it works, this will work in any browser. Uh, so this, despite the fact it is in this side-by-side -side stereoscopic rendering mode, isn't actually in what they would consider VR rendering mode. So I do have the Oculus here. As you can see, I pick it up and I can kind of move it. You can see what's going on. That's not a fun way to demo VR. Does anybody want to come up here and be brave enough? I have a very enthusiastic person over there. Come on up um, and demonstrate the positional tracking here with the VR. Uh, so as you can see, this hit the F key to engage VR rendering is just going to tell the user, hey, you know, if this was all rendered in one position, you could make this VR enabled. All right, so hello. What's your name? Dennis. Dennis. All right, so we're going to... I warn you, it's going to be a little dizzy. <laughs> Put this on, just slip it over the head here, strap it on like that, and we are going to put it in VR mode. So you can see that as Dennis looks around, all of the positional uh, tracking is being applied to the headset, and he is completely immersed <laughs> in this. And as tends to be the case when you're doing a VR demo, no one can tell what you're looking at in most situations. You guys get to see. so. We will oops, allow that in full screen and get the mouse out of the way. This is like the biggest problems. Like, where does my mouse go when things are in VR? So, as I, again, this is only 20 lines of code to get this working. It's really, really simple, but you could make it as complex as you want it based on what you were actually rendering in your scene. So, <laughs> at, <laughs> at the risk of uh, making too much of a mess, yeah, just go ahead and pull that off right there. Thank you very much. Yeah. So we now have seen 20 lines of code, my first VR app. Um, I have a couple of slides in here, and we'll switch back over to this, that just shows a little bit of what the boilerplate code that I use 
uh, goes into. I did not write this. I am really glad that someone else did because it enables a lot of other web developers to kind of dive right in here without knowing the specifics. But uh, this is just a little bit of information about these two specific uh, JavaScript files that come as part of the boilerplate code if you're interested in kind of looking at it at a little bit of a lower level. Uh, so what we have here is the VR manager class. And as you can see, it's got a prototype function that checks to see whether or not the browser is WebVR compatible or not. Now, I mentioned my previous demo did not work in a non-VR browser because I did not use this is VR or WebVR compatible function. I just said, no, assume it's, it's, assume it's available. And that was bad coding practices on my part. I'll admit it. Uh, so this will check, hey, Navigator, do you recognize this? Um, and if it does, it will then go through and say, OK, well, is there a head-mounted display available? Now, there are two types of things that the browser will recognize as being a virtual reality-enabled device. The first is the display type, the headset itself. Um, and this is what it will return if it finds this part of the Oculus Rift. There is a second. Uh, or a mobile phone that is in VR mode. This here, and I hope you guys can see it. If not, just come find me. I'll be around hands-on, grab it, play with it, uh, is another part of the Oculus Rift that is known as a positional tracker. And that is what the browser will iterate on and say, hey, we have a VR display device, and we have other devices, input devices, output devices, any kind of device you can think of pretty much with VR, and I've seen some weird ones. Um, any other type of device that isn't a display device will still be enumerated by the browser and say, hey, we've got these available. I think by the default, by default, it picks the first one that it finds. Um, if you have multiple VR headsets plugged in at once, then I'm jealous. Um, so that's what this is doing here, is it's going in and saying, hey, find all the devices and tell me that they're there. The VR effect class here, or library, I think is what they are. Um, We'll go in and say, all right, so we're going to take the camera that you made, and we're actually going to kind of rip it apart and use two cameras instead. I don't want to worry about two cameras in my scene. I've done it before on accident, and it's a mess. Um, so this effect is really nice, because it will do that automatically for you. And it will say, take a camera for the left eye, take a camera for the right eye, and ask for all the details about the device that you can get. What is the screen resolution? What is the window height? What is the window width? What is the field of view on the lenses? So how far away from my eyes can I see things with this device? And then apply that to the device that you found from the device that you found and create that effect automatically. So if I'm using something that has a really high screen resolution, I don't want my effect to be the same as if I'm using something with a really tiny one, because it's just going to feel really weird. And a big part of virtual reality feeling comfortable is that it doesn't feel really weird. So it's nice to not have to handle that by yourself, because you know that if every developer implemented this differently, it would not con create a consistent VR experience. <laughs> so there's some other examples that I want to show you guys, because some people are starting to build really, really cool stuff with this, not just something that's going to swirl around and make you sick. And uh, I want to share some of those with you guys to hopefully inspire some of you that have maybe been thinking of ideas of stuff to build and making that possible. So the first thing that I hear a lot is, well, why would you use virtual reality as a developer? Well, one, it's really fun. OK, that's, that should be enough. But it's not always. So, one thing that I like to tell people is, well, it'd be really cool to be in VR and have a whole bunch of different screens around me so I don't have to pester my hardware department every time I want a new monitor or something fun to play with. And someone else suggested a virtual reality simulator for virtual reality devices, which I thought was an awesome idea. Um, <laughs> but yeah, you know, you get that a lot. And what I, what I hear people wanting is examples of coding in VR. And I couldn't, unfortunately, get a live demo of this to work. That's kind of the state of web VR and virtual reality on the web right now. Uh, but this is an example of an application called Rift Sketch. Uh, and this developer created an application that lets him write 3JS code while he is in VR. So he's directly editing everything in his environment as he's you know, sitting in it. Uh, that's really, really awesome. Uh, again, here's this leap motion that we've heard about. He's using that to pass through the image of his hands on the keyboard so he can see what he's typing as he's developing. That tree at the beginning is not there. 
If you watch the full video, and I recommend going to this link and checking it out because Brian's work is really awesome. Uh, you can see that he actually starts creating these trees and these objects in real time. And it's just one of the examples where you can start to see the power of virtual reality and what it enables you to do. When I first started learning 3D development on a two-dimensional screen, it's really hard to figure out exactly where everything's being placed, how easy it's going to be for the user to walk around through the environment. And virtual reality makes that much easier because you could literally get off your chair and just be like, ah, oh, okay, yes. Yeah, that looks right. Okay, go back to work. Simple. Really, really interesting. Um, once I can get this working on my own machine, I will absolutely use this to code my 3D environments. So I mentioned earlier stock market and your portfolio prices, your bank account. It's pretty boring. Looks like that might be getting cut off a little bit at the edge, but the, and the last letter of city is Y. Um, so this is something coming out of Fidelity Labs. It's an early prototype that actually takes someone's stock portfolio or bank account and visualizes it as a city. So they can walk around within their stock city and see how their money is doing uh, effectively. Uh, and they do this in the form of buildings. So I'm going to actually show you this one live. I got it working last night, right before the party. And you can see here that they are using, again, the polyfill to render this, even though we don't have it in VR mode yet. I like how the buildings are transparent. You don't get that all the time in real life, and that's one of the fun things about VR. It doesn't have to be realistic. So in this city, I'm you know, using the arrow keys, walking around. It's pretty cool. I can come over here. I think Microsoft's over here somewhere. I can maybe see it. Ah, there we go, right there in the back. Cool. Um, which is neat. You're seeing this in a new way. It's a different way of thinking about something that was previously, in my opinion, a little bit boring. Um, so you just go in here and say, OK, toggle VR mode. And we do that. And again, we see when we look around in the headset, you can now experience the full scale of your city. Run around here. The buildings are not just transparent there, you can walk through them. Um, but it's a really cool prototype to kind of show you how VR can be used to visualize things in different ways. So, um, switching back over here real quick, and I'm just gonna throw this up so you can see the link here, visor, uh, create, create.visor.io. This is an interesting application of JavaScript and virtual reality because you can build virtual reality environments in your browser right away. Uh, Drag and drop programming, it's a really interesting way to kind of play around with 3D graphics. And this one's been crashing on me a little bit, so I'm hoping it doesn't today. I have an example of this right here. And if I go up to the root element, I've just dragged this in from the templates that they've already predefined up here. You can see there's a VR template right there. So you can go through, drag this in, drop it, you're good to go. Once you do that, all you have to do is edit the stuff in the render loop, edit the scene, build some stuff. I built a planet, um, and you can play the button there and see that it's rendering stereoscopically, again, in the background, so I can see what I'm creating as I'm creating it. Love to get in more detail about this, um, but I want to save time for Q&A. So I will just show you that this um, outputs to a JSON file that represents your graph that is then loaded into a WebGL canvas. So I can walk around. I can look all around me. It's not the most interesting scene, but you get the idea. You're building stuff for VR in your browser, drag and drop, really straightforward. I have a lot of uh, information about all of these and a link that I'll give you in a couple of slides. So looking ahead, these are the things that are complete enough to talk about, but too broken to demo for you guys today. Uh, these are projects that I'm working on that are web VR, JavaScript, uh, and what we have here is visual VR. Uh, I mentioned I'm really interested in taking data that's kind of boring right now and making it interesting with VR. So I'm working on an application that will parse through Excel files and create graphs based on that. I have the graph part working, but the text does not work, and that makes your chart pretty unuseful. So that's why that's not getting demoed today. Uh, second, this is my cat contribution to the conference. Um, <laughs> 
I am working on a, uh, a game called Kitten Collector VR. Uh, what I'm trying to do here is hack Unity's exported WebGL files so that instead of using the renderer that works with the 3JS library, you can find a render, or create a renderer that takes all of the outputted files from Unity when you build a WebGL app, and you can apply the rendering effects there. Um, that part is very early in its development stages, um, but I'm excited because the kitten part is done, and that's the fun part. So, <laughs> so why build for VR? It's freaking awesome. Uh, I don't really, I hope I don't have to convince you guys too much that uh, VR is really fun and really entertaining to build for. Uh, I'll just leave you with this. Uh, Facebook bought Oculus last year for $2.2 billion, and industry experts suggest that by 2020, it will be an industry valued at about $150 billion. That's about half of what all of the mobile phone industry is right now. That's a lot of money, and... That's a lot of opportunity. So it's freaking awesome, and there's a lot of potential here. It's really, really new. Alpha, alpha technology. If you want to build something that doesn't just use technology, but helps kind of define how future users will build technology, this is a really great way to do it. So it's your turn. Uh, what you want to see here, everybody, well, not everybody loves the Matrix, so I don't know how Neo felt about it at some points, but. It's really fun, uh, and if you guys want to go ahead and get started, I have a bit.ly link up here, JSConf VR, uh, that will kind of give you a more detailed outline of everything that I've talked about uh, up here, and includes all the links and all the stuff that I wish I could have just stayed and talked about for probably you know, the whole rest of the day if they let me. Um, JSConf VR, uh, it will link to a bunch of helpful stuff. So. Um, again, I want to say thank you. That was my last link. Uh, and now we will, I guess, do Q&A. So that was exciting. My mic isn't working. Okay, cool. Uh, so that was exciting because there was a mysterious MC disappearance. Uh, <laughs> and there was VR. So I don't know where we go from now. Um, we don't have much time unless... Well, we'll see. Well, first question is really funny, but I think it's really important. Um, where can I get the Oculus for my dog? So, Oculus Rift, I'm not entirely sure, but it looks like they're just using a Google Cardboard with a sticker on it. So if you can find the cardboard and the sticker, you're probably good to go. And you can buy those online for about $20. I guess problem solved. <laughs> um, Okay, you kind of answered that question at the very end, but maybe you can elaborate. Um, any ideas about what you can do in browser uh, VR aside from games? Um, so I've started to see a lot of really interesting applications of VR technology. The stock market one was the first one that I heard of, but there are a lot of opportunities for kind of any industry to start picking this up and building uh, things with it. So. A big place that I think is a lot of potential for VR is education and building applications that get kids interested in coding. Um, and that, you know, it can be browser-based or desktop-based, and I don't see why, the, why not the browser, because, you know, we're seeing a lot of really interesting stuff come there. Um, education and, you know, the medical industry have started to use virtual reality technologies to some, some pretty substantial degrees of success. Um, it's kind of hard to answer that question because in my head I feel like everything will eventually use VR. So pretty much anywhere you can think about using VR, um, the browser is a good spot to start with that. And if you want to talk specific ideas, come find me afterwards because I've got like 20 that I want to see implemented, but I don't know if now is you know, the best use of the Q&A time. So. Um, someone wants to know, is there a boilerplate? available somewhere. Yes. Uh, so the link will be at the JS Comp VR that I had there. Um, off the top of my head, I, th I think it's, it's Borismus, uh, B-O-R-I-S-M-U-S, slash web VR boilerplate on GitHub. That's the one that I showed here and the one that I use in my projects. Um, I think that will be the last one. The weirdest VR device you've heard of. <sighs> Um, if we're going, I'm going to go weird cool, and this goes into the headset still rather than an input device, but 
The coolest headset that I've seen is called the Fove, and it does gaze tracking. So the demo for that was pretty much just being a Terminator, where you had this headset on shooting lasers out of your eyes. That was weird, but also really awesome, because uh, right now we just use our eyes for seeing, which is kind of boring. Um, and the weirdest kind of device that I think I've seen is, again, it's, it's not entirely weird. It's weird that it's actually being built right now, I guess, is um, there's a hang gliding experience for VR, and someone built like this huge rig for it, so you like lay in this little hammock, and then they swing you while you're in VR. That was kind of weird. Um, so I'd probably say something like that. Seeing, seeing the weird but awesome stuff that people are building to make their experiences more immersive has been the cool part. I'm pretty sure everyone would like to be like, you know, those cats from GIFs, like shooting lasers out of your eyes. Yeah. Like, isn't yeah. that There's like an app idea dreams? for you. Like, <laughs> it is for me. I don't know. Um, do you think you will be able to like uh, stick around and like maybe let people you know, use the Oculus, because I think that basically everyone in the audience is thinking about it right now, so I just thought I might ask. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, my plan is at lunchtime to be set up at one of the little tables so you guys can come take a look at it, poke around with the hardware, hardware a little bit, uh, try the rainbow motion sickness simulator yourself, and chat. So you can get sick right after you eat, basically. Exactly. That's because that would wants. be great. <laughs> Winning it. Okay, that was, that was amazing. Thank you so much. Thank you.